Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Well, it's been a while since the last Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, hasn't it? And you know what's also been a while? It's been a while since we've done any tape recorder videos. So, I think it's about time I fix that. And voila! A tape recorder. So what we got here is a Sony tape recorder TC280. It's a very nice tape recorder, except there's one small problem with it. And that is, it does not record on the right hand channel. As I will now demonstrate. Now, I have my microphone hooked up to this tape recorder through the special adapter that I've made, so it comes through both channels, and you're actually listening to the direct audio from this tape recorder. You might notice that as I speak you can see the meters going up and down because I've got this in the recording mode at the moment but it's paused and let me just put this into three and three fourths reset the counter and I'm going to make a recording so you can see what I'm talking about so we are now recording as I'm speaking into the microphone and I'm going to play this back in a minute and I'm sure, well I hope you can see that both meters are still responding but I'm going to play this back in a minute and you'll see that we only get right hand channel sound I might also add that I think these metal reels are a little bit too heavy for this machine We are now recording as I'm speaking into the microphone and I'm going to play this back in a minute and I'm sure, well I hope you can see that both meters are still responding but I'm going to play this back in a minute and you'll see that we only get right hand channel sound. Okay so we know this thing records and we know this thing does play however it does have that problem of not recording anything on the right channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if both channels are getting biased. So I've got my multimeter here and I'm going to set it onto a frequency counter. And I'm going to put this onto record. Make sure I've got both channels recording. Make sure the capstan isn't engaged so we don't get a nasty kink in it. Got an extremely squeaky floorboard here. Anyway, I'm going to probe both sides of the head and we'll see if there is any sign of any oscillation. We know the bias oscillator is working because it did make a remarkably good recording on the right channel, but not on the left. So I'm going to probe here, Put one probe on the ground, and one probe here, see if we get anything on the meter. Okay, I can see 162 kilohertz, that seems rather high, although this is a reel-to-reel, -reel, so uh, that's probably okay. And what about the other side, is that getting bias? Yep, certainly is, 162 kilohertz, so both sides appear to be getting bias, so it appears that the bias seems to be absolutely fine on both sides of the head. It appears that the audio signal is not. Of course I'm not sure if that is the case, but that's what I think so far. And the cause of that could be a faulty record play switch. If it is, I should just be able to spray something in there and get that working again. Hopefully that's all it's going to be. Hopefully I won't have to replace any transistors or anything like that. But anyway, Let's open this thing up and see what's inside. Or we could still have problems on the outside. Just check out that in there. We've got oxide covering one of the little magnetic pads in the head. And I'm not sure which one is the left and which one is the right. But I'm pretty sure the right would not sound that good if it had that amount of oxide on it. And also, the erase head is absolutely covered in smooth 
So we need to get that done as well. So I've got here this methylated spirit. And I'm just gonna I've got and I've soaked this cotton swab in it and I'm just gonna go over the heads with the cotton swab. And that is coming right off. This would also account for the only partially erased original recording on the tape. Oh, that's taken quite a lot off the erase head, as you can probably see. The camera will focus on it. Okay, so I'm going to go over with a clean end and do the play head, which is also the record head. There's a little bit down there. There's quite a bit up there. There's some trouble with this great big shield on this head. It's hard to actually get to the head itself. It's taking a little bit longer to get off. And we've had quite a bit come off this as well. If I could just find it. There we go. Not quite as bad as the erase head though. But hopefully, that's all we're going to have to do. You know, it's crazy how some problems can have the simplest of solutions. As you may have noticed, let me just turn the right input all the way down. We now have left hand channel sound. But we're not done yet because it's not exactly perfect. It is doing a good job of recording and playing back the high frequencies on the left hand channel now. Although it's still a little bit weak and it's a little bit tinny so there is still something going on in there that we need to sort out. But this is a good start. This is, you know, this is a good sign that we can restore this tape recorder back to full working order. Okay, well I'm going to take that back about the left not recording very good because I've just played that recording back in this reel-to-reel -reel, and it sounds absolutely fantastic. There's no problems with the left whatsoever. It's coming in just as good as the right. It doesn't sound tinny. So I think that must have just been my ears. But anyway, I'm going to play back that recording again and you can hear it for yourself. Got the tape all queued up ready, so let's give it a listen. Okay, in three, two, one. You know, it's crazy how some problems can have the simplest of solutions. As you may have noticed, let me just turn the right input all the way down. We now... Okay, well I appear to have recorded over it. Don't know what that was, but I think you can tell for yourself that the Sony's recording amp is working absolutely perfectly fine. So that's one less thing I'm going to have to do to it. So the only thing I've got left to do is just fix that little playback issue, give it a little bit of a once over, and I think we'll be done. Okay, so to get this into full working order, there's not really much I'm going to need to do. There's three things I'm going to do to this. Firstly, is this little tape sensor right here which breaks and makes connection to the motor now when there's tape threaded this will be pushed up like this so the motor can run and when there's no tape threaded in the machine that drops down and breaks the connection to the motor but you might notice that it doesn't go down very fast so that needs to be cleaned up and re-lubed just a minor little job and also when this thing is playing or recording Sometimes the tape will veer over to one side or the other of the pin controller, so that's something that needs to be addressed. And I can fix that simply by replacing this little pressure pad right there, so the tape has the right amount of tension on it again, because I don't think that is actually pressing up against the head and doing its job anymore, so that needs to be replaced. And after that we're going to go inside this machine and fix the issue with the playback amplifier. Alright, so I've replaced that pressure pad. And this was the little pressure pad out of a cassette and I thought it would make a pretty good replacement. It's about the same size as the original. You might be able to see a bit of the tab there and a bit of the tab there which I just simply bent around the back of this thing that holds the pad in and put some glue there to hold it in place. 
And that seems to be working really, really well. The tape's working as it should. It is not veering off to either side of the pinch roller. And it's pulling the tape through it no trouble. So, in that respect, we're pretty much done. Anyway, I did promise you a look inside this tape recorder about 15 hours ago, so let's go and do that right now. I've taken a couple of, well, I've taken all the screws out, apart from the screws holding the motor guard in. And there's a sticker on here, yeah, a couple of feet have fallen off as well. In the process, no super user pool parts inside. I mean, no user serviceable parts inside. Well, I don't think they ever thought that cool dude Clem was going to come along. It looks as if I'm going to have to take the front panel off to get to that tape sensor switch because if I move this up and down, I see nothing, no mechanical parts moving in here. Yes, it is plugged in. You can see the motor fan spinning. I just want to see what that looked like. Also, I wanted to see if I could find a date code on any of the components on this thing so I could get some clue as to when this was built. Now, usually there's a date on the motor or the motor run capacitors. However, it looks like someone has been in here before me because I can see where the motor run capacitor would usually be. It has been replaced by a couple of very modern looking capacitors right here. Which is a good thing to do. Because those old capacitors you know, after so many years, they're not going to be so good anymore. So what I'm going to do now is first I'm going to unplug it. So I don't accidentally touch anything there and shock myself. And I'm going to record a 1 kilohertz test tone on this recorder. Then I'm going to calibrate the play amplifier so they're both the same level. I'm going to play back the tape. Because I know this records properly. I know this records properly, it just uh, has a little bit of an issue with the playback. If I turn this around so we can see the amplifier board, I believe that this section along here is the play, and this along here is where the recording occurs, because there's a couple of potentiometers here, marked RECL, which I assume means record level, and there's a couple here that just say LEV which I'm going to assume means playback level. Okay, well, here I am recording the 1 kilohertz test tone onto the tape, because I know that the recording amplifier records at the right level. So I've got that adjusted to zero. And this is what I use to generate the 1 kilohertz test tone. Audacity. And that is recording onto the tape. Alright, so it's time to adjust the playback levels now. I've got this back to the start of the 1 kilohertz test tone. And actually, both levels look a little bit low, so... I'm going to find the LEV, potentiometer mark LEV, and I'm just going to adjust that until they both reach zero. Okay. Well, L is reaching zero now, so just adjust the right. Okay, the right's just reading just a touch high, so I just need to adjust that. Make that, a, make that just a hair lower. And the tape's got a little bit of dropout issue, but I think that's pretty much bang on. Okay, now to address that one final problem, we're going to have to take the front of this tape recorder. Got the shield replaced, well, not replaced, but put back on. Let's get this back on its front. Mm, this thing's heavy. This thing is full of heavy metal. This tape recorder's a metal head. Well, it looks as if we're not going to be able to get in and do that final part, because I'm beaten by this screw. I've just completely stripped the head trying to get that screw out, so this front panel is never going to come off. Well, any more than this. Although we can take a sort of a look inside. For people interested in all that juicy, tasty mechanism. And stuff, and gears, and belts, and wheels, and... 
Oh well, I think it's time to put this back together. Well, here we are, back together again. And I thought I'd leave you with some sound quality, recording quality, tests, whatever you want to call them. So anyway, this is how it sounds at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. And although the S sounds a little bit splattery at this speed, it does actually do a remarkable job of recording music, surprisingly, at this tape speed, which I will show you shortly. But first, let's go over to 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. So here we are recording at 3 and 3 fourths inches per second. And as you can hear, the sound quality has vastly improved. And I would record music on this tape recorder at this speed. And finally. and finally, here we are at seven and a half, or seven and a half if you want to be extremely British about the way I say things. And this is what the sound quality is like at seven and a half inches per second. Now let's do a music test. I think that's just about it for this video, and I'm going to say that's a successful repair, even though I barely had to do anything to get this thing working anyway. I've even gone and found the tape head cover. Now it looks a bit more presentable now. 
That's a bit of a shame about that tape sensor that I couldn't fix because I couldn't get this front cover off, but I don't really think that's much of a big deal. However, I would have liked to have got the front cover off this to get to the idler wheels, maybe clean them up a little bit, because I did notice a little bit of flutter in the sound, but, um, you know, you can expect that from something that old, you know, it's not going to work as good as it once did. But anyway, that's it for this video, so until next time, goodbye.